Hey folks, welcome to episode 21. It's been a proper journey on it. Right, you might remember it at Wally, I picked up a few locals, and I did say we'll be doing a little bit of a feature on each one of them. The first one this week is the lovely Dapol Class 68. So, let's get right into it and take a look at that lovely locomotive. Alright folks, so here we are. We've got the little Class 68 out on the layout. I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now, and one thing that's very obvious is how well it actually runs. Now I've DCC sound fit this particular model, I used an ESU lock sound version 5, and I got the uh, sound profile from John JMC over at Digitrains, it's a really nice little sound profile, and I think we should start by showing you that, you can get cold start on all sorts on it. So first things first, we've got the lights on. You can't see those at the minute. So for the starting up, you can either just do the cab startup or you can do the cold startup on the engine there. So the cab startup is as follows. That's really cool. Yeah, and then you can start the engine up as you would normally. That's really clever. So, start the engine up normally. You get the compressor on there, it's really cool. Now, the speaker I've got in here is a Rails exclusive. I believe they call it the, uh, the Chunky Boombox. Now, as you can hear, it sounds quite good. You've got various horns. You've got flange squeal, you know. All the good stuff, so let's take a listen, shall we? I've got the drive hold on. I don't know if you can see that there. No, you can't. But the drive hold lets you rev the engine up whilst the local is stationary, and you can release it, and it simulates the local pulling a big old load. That's really cool. You've also got an active brake on this, and it'll eventually start using momentum if you press the brake button. You can speed that process up, so that's really cool. Let's just shut the engine off for a second because it's quite loud. The light function on this local is quite extensive shall we say. You've got your basic lights there. I've turned the cab lights off. Really neat feature actually. In here you've got the exhaust ports. You just pop that plastic exhaust off and underneath it are the two jumper switches for the cab lights. So you don't need to remove the full body just to adjust the cab light settings. That's really clever. So at the minute I've just got the normal running lights on. Um, you can also have it with the what they call night lights which makes them brighter. See that there. So, how's the detail on this model? Oh, I'm going to get my special pointing device and show you. So, all the cab rails, uh, they're just the flexible plastic, which is, um, it's not fantastic, they are quite delicate. Um, so, just be aware when you're manhandling the model that these are similar to the ones that the likes of Backman use. They are only plastic and they're only held in at the tops there with the smallest amount of adhesive so they will eventually flick off I think you can get metal parts uh, metal replacement ones for these I've not yet got them is the under cab window rails got the side rails on there but these are missing the holes aren't even drilled now apparently Dapol will replace these for you for your charge I've contacted Dapol and they Still haven't got back to me yet, and that was over a week ago, so I'm not sure what's happening with that. But other than that little issue, the liveries replied really well. This is just tampo printed on there, but it did come with a proper etch brass nameplate, which I've not yet fitted. To be brutally honest with you, I would more than likely mess it up, and that looks good enough for me anyway, so I'm probably just going to leave it as it is. Roof detail looks really nice, 
horns are molded really well they are only plastic but again they are molded really well no issues with the exhaust port as i said the exhaust port does just clip off there so you can get access to those jumper switches for the cab lights there then you've got the fans which don't spin which i'm not really bothered about it's a bit gimmicky for my liking but they are designed and modeled really well and i've just applied a good bit of weathering there just to further bring out that detail and if you look through the uh if i can just get my camera down there if you look through the side vents there you can actually see detail behind it there's actually an engine moldings in there and things so if you catch the light just right you can actually see inside there um, you can't see it too well on camera but you can see the detail within that little um, grid if you will and it's the same in here as well you can just sort of see behind it there so that's really impressive that's like next level stuff so another interesting feature is with the um the detail pack on this model the detailing at the front there i don't know if you can see it but it's quite dark let me see if i can make it brighter for you there the pipes and things at the front they're all like full length but on the rear of the train where you would use them for coupling up you can see the pipes on the rear there are actually shorter that's quite a clever idea because it means you can still have your coupling in there i've got a kd on here at the minute but if you were to have a tension lock on there or whatever it means you can still have some representation of the finer details without it actually impeding your ability to run the local round to what you might call train set curves second radius or even third radius and of course the buffers they are sprung which is something we all like to see ah oh, jolly good excellent it didn't come with a driver but i fitted one you can just see the young man in there in the cab getting the cab off was easy enough you just take the body off and then release it from its little constraints do be careful though because there is a very small look at it in the headlights there a very small what you what you might call a uh, like a headlight shim thing if you will they do come out quite readily and they're quite fiddly to get back in so if you are going to take the cab out do be careful of that do watch it because it will come out and you'll lose it on the floor like I did. As for how the local runs, it's am it's amazing. I mean, the sound profile I've got on this ESU Lock Sound 5, I haven't adjusted the settings at all. This is literally out of the box. We'll put it on speed step 11 there. And you see she rolls away nice and smooth, nice and quiet. Uh, no juddering or nothing. Move it up to speed step 21 there. And again, really smooth. And I've not actually fitted a stay alive to this unit yet. And I don't think I'll need to. So as you can see, in just a moment there, I'm going to move these points over. And again, we all know my track work isn't the best, but I'll just stick that onto speed step, let's see, 13 there. And you'll see just how well she actually traverses these points. Nice slow speed. All four wheels on the local do have pickups on them, and they do seem to be well fitted. So that should really aid running. And I've weathered this, and the wheels aren't exactly pristinely clean anymore, because I've not fully cleaned them. But as you can see there, look, absolutely zero problems running into the sidings there. Really, really runs quite well, to be fair with you. Pulling power's not really a problem, as to be expected. It's a big, heavy locomotive. Not the heaviest. I know the Acura Scale Delta is sort of the heavyweight champion of the world at the minute. Provided you've got decent points, she'll pick up all day long. No issue at all. Plenty of pulling power. And as you can see there, even on the, on the tight curves, there's no intrusion really. The buffer does just catch the KD on this second radius curve, but it doesn't cause any issues with the railing, anything like that. So I'm really pleased with it so far. You can jump with this local too. It's, it, it's happy doing slow speeds, happy doing fast speeds. So if you're into that sort of thing of running operations in one of you, then it shouldn't really be a concern of yours. And she'll happily stop on the points. Again, you might think that these are all things you take you know, for granted with a modern piece of rolling stock, but having had modern day offerings from the likes of, well, other manufacturers, shall we say, not naming any names, um, even they don't run as well as this, so Dapol, Really have done a superb job with this little loco. And I think you can pick these up now from as little as 130 quid. 
I say you have to spend maybe a tenner to get the uh, the handrails on there. But other than that, it's a fantastic bit of kit. I'm really pleased with my purchase. And you can see she runs like an absolute champ. One thing you've just missed is that the local actually has a, a AWS on it. So every now and again it will just play the ambient sound of the AWS warning lamp there. That's really cool, a nice little extra. Wasn't expecting to hear that. But she handles these curves really nicely. And even though she's only pulling five little HUA wagons at the minute, I have no doubt in my mind this local will be able to carry and pull as much weight as the real thing given half a chance. Really, really happy with it. Beautiful little model guys, if you fancy one do check one out. I know Rails and Sheffield have currently got these on offer, uh, but there are other places you can get them from. Don't be put off by the fact it hasn't got the little handrails under the cab. It did bother me ever so slightly. But in the end, it's still a beautiful model, and you can fit those handrails easily enough without too much stress there. So, hopefully, more people will be getting one of these in the near future. Right, folks, hope you've enjoyed that little review. Let's crack on with the rest of this week's video. So, <clears throat> another thing I picked up at Wally was this Metcalf little um, Lower Belief Terrace House kit thing. Never built a Metcalf kit before, but I saw Zoe build one on Jenny's channel, and she didn't have too much of a problem with it. And I'm thinking I could probably make a half good go at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to build it. It's not going to be a, a complete vlog, if you will. Every time something interesting happens, I'll, I'll record it. Let's see how we get on. Okay, first thoughts first. There is a lot going on here. I seem to have two sheets of coloured card and then two base plate cards. Uh, I think this comes as two separate halves. Um, I would assume I put the skeleton together first. Then I'm assuming I stick these coloured bits and pieces. They really are nicely designed. They're not 3D but they do, they do look it and I suppose that is half the battle. Right, I am going to try my absolute utmost and best to make this look so but possible, so here we go. Okay, so we've got this far, so far. Use a little bit of the instructions. Uh, it was a little bit slow getting going. Quite overwhelming, all these sheets of card and things and what have you. A little bit of an issue there. Despite using a really sharp fresh blade, still got a little bit of tear there. So, don't take it for granted that these pieces just pop out easy. Some of them just fall out, some of them you really have to cut them out. So, I believe now we have to use these strengthening pieces to the carcass of the house here. And then these backings. Then we can fit some windows and walls. Okay, just building the porch section there and it's all come together mostly pretty well. Got the roof here to go on in a minute, but for the doors don't fall into the, into the trap I originally fell into. There is a lot of doors on the front here, but they're not the right ones there for the, the actual doors 
themselves. Porch doors are actually separate, so make sure you use those. Right, so it's about an hour later now. We've got most of the little house built. I'm quite impressed with that. All these little curtains and things with this little card cutouts, which come with a little sheet um, over here. Blinds, doors and things. I've loads left over, so they might come in hand for later on. Uh, quite fiddly, but you take your time with it. After you've done the main structure, you sort of disregard the instructions and you sort of get like a, a sixth sense, if you will, for how the kit needs to go together and what the components mean and things. And you can just see through the bay window there, I've put, you know, I mean, I could have put things inside of it. So there's a few more bits and pieces to do. I'm going to put the roof on it now and then we'll uh, see how it looks when we've finished the whole thing. All right, there we are, just after a few hours of work, we've got the full thing up and done. I've not done the gardens because there's not enough room in the area that I've got uh, designated for these. This is only one of the two. You get two sets of these, so the other one will go just nicely in there. And then the street scene will look, I think, something a lot better. Unless you fill, fill a little gap in there where you cut it away from the base plate. But other than that, for me... I would say, yeah, first time with a Metcalf kit, really impressed with how it looks, fairly easy to build, and you get something that looks really quite good, especially from what you would call normal viewing distances. So yeah, excellent, really happy with that. I think for 13 quid, way better than the uh, other op options available with uh, when it comes to building from card. Excellent. What do you think? Should I build some more? Let me know in the comments. Alright folks, hope you enjoyed those two little features, the review of the Dapo 60 and the little um, overview build of the Metcalf uh, Low Leaf Cottage there. I have to say, it looks so nice, it really does, and I've finished it off, i put a drain pipe on there, drain pipe was really easy to make, <coughs> if I have a piece of it here somewhere, it is literally just a little bit of old metal caging. I think it was a hanging basket, but it's just about the right thickness for a drain pipe. And they just bend it with the old pliers, and you've got a drain pipe. It's so uh, simple as that. So, for the rest of the updates, nothing much on the ag aggregate yard. That is pretty much done for now. One of the two houses in place, still need to make the second one. On the little, uh, ah, see, it's coming together now. I weathered the house up. The house, or should I, no, not the house. I've got the point in place, and I've weathered up the abandoned building. That's all nice and derelict, and I've tried to fog up the windows. So what I've done is I've sprayed it with a matte lacquer, and I'm quite impressed with the effect of it. I'm probably going to get rid of the white out there. It doesn't look fantastic, so I might take that off. I'm not sure, because I quite like how the faded out look of the lacquer looks on there, so that's really nice. Quite impressed with that. We've then got some placement of items there, the uh, tools that were part of the former depot. Got a little bit of a build scene going on here, a bit of repair work. And then we've got the fueling area as well. Still loads and loads and loads and loads and loads to do on it. But it's coming together rather nicely. And we've got the stabling tracks there for the engineers' trains. All coming together rather well. Happy with that. Right, folks, so apart from feeling a bit under the weather this week, that's it for episode 21. Next week, we're going to have a bit of weathering section on the Collet Goods from Batman, which I got at Wally, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss that. And we're also going to be reviewing these lovely things. That's right, Richard Bryan at DCC Concepts have been good enough to send me some of these for review. Modern image street lighting, you can adjust the height of them. They even come with little boards, so we're going to get these out this week and have a bit of a look at them, see what we can do. So, until then, folks, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.